Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back here. We are back here with Kukat. Last time we just arrived uh, at the surface of this historic site. And today we're going to work our way through here. Going to see what kind of uh, tasty loot we can get our little hands on. or Well, four hands, in fact. And we're going to continue to level up. Let's do a quick refresher here. We have good strength because of double muscled. We are using our horn. We're currently saving for a uh, another mutation so that we can get another limb. Um, I do want to work on leveling up multiple arms as much as possible going forward as well. Uh, whatever new mutation we have, unless it's really good, we're probably going to neglect it. Uh, other than that, we have Stinger, which I probably won't level up anymore. Um, just because I think uh, we're, we're better putting the rest of our points into the things that really matter which is these three here stinger is nice as a little kind of supplement to our damage um it may be worth putting one more point in at some point um purely because you know the damage does go up with every i'm more interested in going extending the amount of rounds that the poison is active for uh, but for now we're just going to focus on these three we're going to level up one more time, buy a new mutation. And I don't remember what we want, We wanted to pick up. We are currently obviously using uh, short blades because of our horn. I think if we can get multiple arms high enough level, we can actually maybe equip axes and all of our offhands. But we want to get it to at least level 10. Level 10 multiple arms gives you a 37% chance, I believe, to hit with your offhand. Um, which stacks with this, so we still have pretty good chances to uh, to use axes. The only benefit right now with short blade, obviously, is jab, which means we get a, a second attack when we attack with our offhand. Anyway, enough talking. Let's uh, let's get into it, shall we? The uh, the horse is friendly. Two chests right off the bat. We like that. By the way, I've installed a brand new mod here called Better Damage Numbers. Uh, I will put the link for that mod down below. Uh, as you can see, our damage numbers might look slightly different. And I'm still kind of configuring it, but I'm, I'm kind of happy with it for now. We currently have the Vibro Dagger. We have the Gaslight Chris, which has been drained. Which means we need to put a new battery in this. Uh, I do worry this is going to run out of juice pretty quickly. Similarly, this one. Um, which means we may have to swap these out for regular daggers. We have this pair of gloves that we found. One thing to note. Um, when you have multiple arms or multiple limbs of any kind... These mitts here, with one AV, unless we have one AV gloves on both sets of hands, you don't get that because it's actually averaged across all body parts. You can see here, this item's armor value bonus is being averaged across all body parts of the same type. So, one thing to keep in mind if you're going for multiple limbs is you do need, obviously, more gloves. Say, so, let me explain this, try and explain this a little better here. Say this, uh pair of gloves had two armor value and we just had one pair equipped we would only get one armor value because it's being halved because we have two sets of hands <clears throat> hopefully that makes sense if not please let me know i will try to explain it slightly better um yes oh yeah also because i was streaming cud uh twitch.tv Slash rogue underscore rat underscore if you want to check the... We did a cud stream. We always stream cud, but uh, all of my abilities are kind of out of sync here. Very nice. Mm. By the way, I will explain what these numbers mean. So let me attack this goat. Big number is the damage. That number there is the amount of times that we penetrated or the amount of times we hit. And the other number in white is how much XP we got. So let's uh, let me try and show you another example here. One XP, 
we hit four times and we did uh, 23 damage. If you find the numbers a little bit obnoxious, let me know and I will um, I will adjust them. You can turn certain things off in the mod. I just like knowing all of the all of the details. You know, I'm that kind of guy. Whoa. We just trod on a uh, a mine there. We're currently being... Actually, no, I was going to say we're about to be eaten. But we uh, we killed the wedge outright, which is incredible. If you guys haven't uh, seen it already. Um, the horns that we're currently using are extremely powerful in the early game. It's such a great starting uh, mutation to have. We are just chewing through everything right now. More books, always good. Okay. Yeah, if the numbers are too much, let me know and we can change that. I'm just going to clear the outside here before we move down. Looks like this dragonfly has a problem with me. Let's try and hit it with a bow if we can. Okay. Let's cook before we go down here. Let's go canned have it all. This will give us a random effect. Could be anything. And croc jerky. Why not? Okay. Wow, that's a good recipe. That's actually pretty nice. Four dodge value. And some uh, some more max HP. You love to see it. Alright. Down we go. Let's see if this relic is any good. By the way, this is our first official historic site that we've been into. I like to mark all of the historic sites I haven't been to uh, in the in the journal here. You can just do that by pressing enter on them or space. Doesn't really matter. This will mark them on the overworld map just so you can keep track of them. Uh, historic sites are guaranteed to give you a relic. Um, and you can actually you can do a little bit of uh, digging around in your Sultan lore. So we're currently in Tamrimu. Um, let's see. If we see any reference to Tamrimu in any of these, it may tell us what we might find. Thing there, this is all going on about a place called Tuma, which is a very, very unfortunate name. Uh, Tamrimu, here we go. Somewhere in the, this is for the, uh, the Sultan, uh, Kuyupita. Somewhere in the time-worshipping precinct of Tamrimu. Jupiter came uh, upon a river flowing backwards. For the rest of time, or for the rest of life, sorry, he was obsessed with miniature clocks. Interesting. Doesn't really tell us anything about what we might find here, but it does sometimes give you an idea. Um, oh, I mean, this is the artifact chest. It, you, you're looking for this magenta and yellow chest. This will uh, contain a relic. And there's always going to be a legendary. This is a legendary goat and leader of the Cupitarian Church. Disliked by arachnids for giving one of their kind an unfavorable horoscope reading. Damn. You think, does Generation Z still believe in horoscopes? Arachnids are now indifferent. That's actually really handy. This means now that we're not going to be attacked by spiders unless we attack them first. And let's see what relic we have. Okay, we have a, a sword. This is Desiccated, the friend of swine. Um. Okay, so this gives us plus two to hit. It is, of course, a long blade. It's a sword. It gives us one extra willpower, and it gives us 200 rope with swine. The nicest thing about this is the plus two to hit. Um, 
one willpower is always nice as well. This 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 is honestly something I'm gonna sell. We probably won't end up using it. What I do want to do is grab this chest. You can just stand over the chest and press G to pick that up. And we're going to drop this off um, anywhere that we might need it in order to uh, to store some of our stuff. After you grab the loot, by the way, from a historic site, it's worth fully exploring because sometimes they have multiple layers and you can get more than one relic. Doesn't happen that, that often, but it does happen. It happened to us on stream last night. Keep auto exploring here. We've got some vine wafers. And you can see, look, there is a stairway down. So there is a good chance there may be a second relic here. Check out this Arcanaut, by the way. If these guys have uh, chrome revolvers, I do like to fight them because a chrome revolver is a really nice uh, ranged weapon to have early game. Let's keep moving. We got sewage eels. These should give good XP for our level. Let's find out. 130 XP. Not bad. We are encountering some more scary enemies here. But again, with our charge ability and our horns, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. We've got to keep an eye out down here, though, because you can get some really, really crazy enemies in historic sites, including endgame enemies. Right, one of these guys does actually have a chrome revolver, I think. I think I can hear a chrome revolver. Yes, this guy. We're gonna, about to get ourselves a new ranged weapon here. Let's hit that guy with a sting. You can see the sting is uh, coloured green, which is a nice detail with this mod. You can see there, like, every time he takes three damage there from the sting, it's in green. Alright, so let's grab this uh, chrome revolver. We're going to equip it. There's actually a lot of stuff we want to... Let's finish... Let's kill this other dude first. So this guy dropped a carbide battle axe. Uh, always take food. Food doesn't weigh anything. Big tip. Always check the weight. Food doesn't actually weigh anything. As long as it's prepared. It will weigh stuff if it, has, if it isn't prepared yet. Um, These steel daggers we're actually going to equip. Because I'm assuming that my vibro daggers have run out of charge. Carbide Battle Axe we will take. Uh, we can maybe think about using it. We've got a second Chrome Revolver here. We may pick up a Kimbo. Which allows us to fire two uh, pistols. And we'll take the water. I do like the fact there's all of these uh, sewage eels. These these are decent XP for us. Big hits, insane hits, honestly. And if you're playing this build, by the way, if you're playing along, um, you don't have to use multi weapon fighting. This build is also incredibly good. If you're using single weapon fighting. Like incredibly good. So keep that in mind also. Okay we learned some new lore there. We're grabbing loads of books. Which is also always a good thing. What do we have here? We have a bottle with oil in it. I'm actually going to collect this oil. Oil is very useful to carry around. Probably it's one of the more useful things to uh, collect. And we're going to set this oil as auto collect. I know we're going crazy with the auto collect at the moment. 
Um, the wine and cider will probably sell relatively soon. And the blood I'll probably drop off elsewhere. Hold on, what was that? Nothing good there. Grab the copper nugget. Alright, let's keep moving down. Who knows what we'll find here. Well, we know where the stairway is. That's good. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, when it comes to books, let me quickly explain this, um, if you don't already know. These white books, these are randomly generated text. A lot of them will be nonsense. Nonsense. There is there is one thing you can get from the white books, which is uh, uh, you can get clues to uh, the location of a certain artifact. Yellow books, these are pre-generated law content, so these will make sense, generally speaking. And then other than that, there are green books, which are recipe books. And there are also artifact books, which I believe are magenta. They're obviously much rarer, and they're honestly my favourite artifact to get. I'll be very happy if we can get ourselves a uh, a legendary book. Now, this two-handed steel battle axe is quite a nice weapon. Um, it would be fun to spec into axes. We already do have the axe skill, but to really delve into the tree properly. Being able to dismember with all of our limbs um, would be really fun. The painted vase there. Right, illuminate books. These are worth more money and they give more experience when you trade them in. And we have Reshef floor, Which is also worth a lot of experience. I can't remember if last episode, if we've uh, been to the still and handed in books yet, but we will probably do that this episode. Because we should be able to level up quite easy. Okay, here we go. We, we made it to the uh, the second chest here. We have an, uh, an axe called the Perpetual Fell of Tamramu. Let's see what the shtick is with this. Interesting. So, this gives us a plus two to hit. It gives us a temporal fugue at level one. That's quite nice. The axe itself is garbage. It doesn't do much damage. I think it's uh, like a... Maybe a... An iron axe. It does hardly any damage on its dice roll. Penetration stinks. But the uh, the temporal fugue is quite nice. Maybe we'll, we may equip that. We also have credit wedges, which we can sell. Um, just to give you an idea, let me unequip this gaslight Chris here for the moment until we get some better, um, some better batteries. We will equip the axe here. You can see we now have the ability Temporal Fugue, which has been raised to level three because of our ego. Your ego bonus directly modifies any psychic abilities you have. Because we're playing a Chimera, we are never going to get psychic abilities um, through normal means. We can only get them from items. So this has been increased. You can see the rank has increased by 2 due to your high ego. Which means we, we can create two copies, two clones. So let's, uh, let's give that a whirl. Boom, there we go. They are overburdened. Which is hilarious. We are quite heavy, to be fair. And it looks like we're probably done here now. I knew I saw somebody. There's a grenadier up here. Okay, interesting. Well, if we ever need to buy grenades, we know where to go. Okay, and that is Tamramu done.
That is our first historic site. Uh, resounding success, I would say. Not too challenging at all. So if we look over here, we can see the other three historic sites we found so far. They are in the, the end game areas. Now this is actually a good thing. It means that the artifacts that we'll find there are probably very, very good. Whether or not we ever get round to this one in particular is in a very scary position. I mean, this one is doable. Maybe in five, six levels time, we might be able to pull this off. Anyway, for now, we can um, we can take a journey to the still. I, I, I don't know if we've been there yet. I actually forget. It's been a couple days since I recorded. A folding chair and a high explosive missile. Okay. We do have wayfaring and we have salt dunes law, so that's good. So we can we can move around the desert relatively well here and we can find some ruins along the way. I will always say keep an eye out when you're in the desert. For dawn gliders, uh, they fly, they set you on fire, it's a whole thing. They can be pretty tricky. Whatever that was, we broke it. Uh, we'll take it with us anyway, because we can repair it. We'll also take the chrome revolver. Okay, nothing else here. What you can do, if you're in the desert at night, you can, um, you can either use the wait menu... Control shift w to wait until morning, which I recommend always doing. Or you can press uh, shift at symbol. I'm using a UK keyboard. Um, that will also wait till morning. But you're better using the wait menu because it's specially designed to... Um, To have all of the options there. So you, you want to travel through the desert in the daytime. Just so you can see everything. Travelling during the night time through the desert. Is not always a, a great idea. Okay. We made it. Here we are. And you see there we got an extra 1500 XP. That is because we took the quest to come here from the... Um, from the priest in the in Joppa back in the starting village. First thing I like to do is go into this tent and just take a look at this statue. This will give us Reshef lore. And then this guy here, he will buy any lore we know about Reshef. Um, and he'll give XP. So you can just say, I am interested in sharing secrets from Reshef's life. You can press tab to select everything and then press backspace or delete to accept. There you go, we get 1700 XP, that's a level up. Level 13, we swell with inspiration to name our crocosins. Yes. We're going to name them based on their qualities. They become called the erstwhile union. And because... We now have four mutation points. We can buy ourselves a brand new mutation, which should come with an extra extra limb. Um, let's hope it's an arm. Let's see. Let's buy something. We're going to press M, buy a new mutation, random. Now, because we have Chimera, the mutation will be a physical mutation. So we that's all we know. It will be physical. So let's buy it. So, interesting. We have an option between wings, carapace, and height and hearing. These are all pretty useful in their own way. Um, wings is nice if you just want to travel around without having to worry about uh, getting lost. Carapace, which is the one that we have to grab if we want the new body part. Carapace is kind of nice in that it... You don't have to worry about equipping armor, because you already have innate armor. The problem is, and this is a real problem, 
if we take carapace, we have to actively level it up. If we want to uh, be able to meet the uh, the requirements of having good armor value. Um, as you can see, it starts at level 1 with 3 armor, minus 2 dodge. It does give us some extra resistances, which is nice. And tortoise rep, which we really don't care about. That doesn't matter. Um... I'm actually trying to think now. I actually don't know if we should take it. The fact that we have to level it up. Because we already have three things that we really need to level up. That we need to work on. This is going to add one more into the mix. I think for the sake of this playthrough. I'm going to take it. Just so we can grow the new body part. I actually probably would recommend against it. If this new body part was attached to heightened hearing, for example, it'd be perfect. We could just take the first level. This we're going to, unfortunately, have to actively level up to get higher armor values. Because it means we can no longer equip body armor. So let's just grab it anyway. A face grows out of your upper right arm. Okay, not great. Not great, guys. Um, instead of I really wanted another arm. Instead, we just have an additional face. That's not the worst thing in the world because we can equip in the face slot now these fangs. These were recently added to the game. They count as short blades. Uh, if we can get more of those, um, we can use those. But you can see here now we have an upper right arm face. <laughs> which is pretty interesting. And we have carapace, which is three armor value, minus two dodge. Okay, so we actually can't equip body armor or head armor at this point. Alright. Um, you can see here, when, you, when we look at a weapon, if you're using multiple arms, uh, it tells you the offhand attack chance. 20% for this steel dagger. 51%. For this dagger, I actually don't know why that's 51%. Don't know if it will tell us for the, um, yeah, 50% for this. Uh, 50% for the fangs also. Pretty good. I think I know why. I think because these are uh, upper arms. So if you ever wanted to find out the percentage chance of making an attack with uh, multiple arms, that's how you do that. That's also a new feature that hasn't been in the game long. Okay, we will probably uh, do the water ritual with this warden here. So, they can actually teach you shield. Which may be worth learning. We will grab it. And then always speak to this uh, this Hindran here will give us a quest. Um, and most importantly, she wants us to go to her village and sort something out. Do some detective work. Most importantly, she will give us this, which is a yonder cane. This is a really nice... Um, it's a plant. It allows you to teleport. It's great for getting you out of a... Um, out of a... A stinky situation in which you you may die if you have a turn to teleport away it's really invaluable so i always recommend picking that up you can also do the water ritual with them loved by pariahs let's do it pariah rep is quite nice the music here is very intense We're going to come inside the, uh, the church here, the chapel. This character here. Uh, I saw some people um, have missed this when I uh, released my most recent tutorial for the, ticks and tr the, the tricks and tips. Sorry. This is Sheba. She, is, uh, she gets a random sprite every time. She happens to be a water vine farmer this time. You speak to her and you can trade your books in. Now the smart thing to do, until you get to like level 30 or so, is to save all of your books in a chest. 
Uh, it's obviously harder to level the higher level you are. Still quite easy to level at level 12, level 13, where we are at the moment. So, um, that's something to keep in mind. Instead of giving all your books in at once, you can, um, you can hand them in, uh, as you, as you get a bit higher level, just to get that extra dose of... Because let me show you how much XP they give, just as, as an example. See, there's anywhere from 800 XP per book to 400, down to 100. Then if you look at the illuminated one here, actually only gives us 200 XP. So you have to think stuff like this, it may be worth selling an illuminated book. Normally I would never recommend selling books, but if they give low XP, you might be better off selling them. I think for now, I'm uh, I'm going to actually drop uh, this chest here and we're going to put our books in there. We're going to save them for the time being. I'm still very disappointed about having to pick Carapace and we only got a, uh, a, a lousy face out of it. That's a pretty bum deal. We can store our books there. Secondly, you always want to drink with this guy. This guy gives us Mechanimist rep. He is the High Priest of the Stilt. He also happens to have Baraphramite rep. Because he wrote a poem. That's kind of nice. And you want to aim for getting like 300, 350 Mechanimist rep if you can. If you can't, you can actually drop items into this sacred well here. And they will give you extra rep based on what the item is. So the thermoelectric cell will give us 8 additional rep. Just something to keep in mind. I tend not to do it. I don't like throwing items away. Okay, so we have leveled up. We have some uh, skill points that we can spend. We have charge, which is nice. We can get more um, short blade skills. We could grab hobble if we want. Um... We, of course, just learnt shield. So we could start specking. We could maybe have one hand that has a shield in it. Might be worth doing. We can't get this until we have 27 strength. Where are we at at the moment? We're at 26. So we can we can grab the final tier of multi-weapon fighting pretty soon, which I think is probably a good thing to save up for. So we're going to save our points. I want this as soon as we can get it. Because we're going to go from 35 to 50%. That's a 15% increase right there on uh, striking with the offhand. I know I'm explaining a lot of stuff right now, but you know the 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 sooner I explain it, the the less I have to do it uh, later on. So now we're going to look around the stilt here, see if there's anything special. We do have a bookbinder. You always want to hope for a, at least one bookbinder. This guy doesn't have anything that we're interested in. Other than that, we have the Schematic Drafter. Which will sell us Tinkering Recipes. We currently don't have Tinkering, so it's not that important. But we will be grabbing Tinkering pretty soon. We do have the Intelligence for the first level. Something to keep in mind. This is always kind of a... It's not make or break necessarily, but finding a, a good, getting lucky, I guess, really, getting good RNG for your stilt spawn is um, is a big deal. Not all uh, stilts are created equal. Some of them are pure garbage. Some of them are unbelievable. You're always guaranteed this guy to spawn uh, just to the right of the stilt. An icon merchant will always spawn here as long, uh, along with the gutsmonger. Sorry, it's very early in the morning I'm recording this, by the way. Which is why I, I uh, my, my mouth doesn't work yet. You should always check the kippers as well. They can sell some really nice items. Right, let's go to the next uh, screen here and see what we have. We have a chef. A chef is the same as a kipper, from as far as I understand it. So always want to check them. 
we will eat as well since we're and it's and it's worth checking out what recipes there's always randomly generated recipes here that does nothing other than make us go mmm <laughs> okay we have a second uh, schemax drafter so once we pick up tinkering we have a, a good chance of learning some decent recipes there's a guy there. There's a bookbinder standing in a fire. I hope he doesn't die. That would be very sad. Let's go speak with the bookbinder. Aha! Okay. So these Schrodinger pages. If you ever see one, you should buy it. Like 9 times out of 10, you should buy it. These give you rep with their associated faction. This one is Seekers of the Sightless Way. This one is swine. And the reason you want these is because it will it will boost your reputation with that particular faction, which of course means that you're there are less things that are going to attack you. Um three factions to look out for. Oozes, robots, and trolls. I would say that uh, oozes and robots are probably the biggest two. Especially uh, oozes in the mid game, robots in the late game. Uh, you can also get Schrodinger pages that are, it will say chapter unspecified. And you actually get to select the faction that you want to garner rep with. So, really cool. Um, I'm going to buy both of these. I think probably the seekers of the, let me check my current rep. You can press control F to check your reputation. Seekers of the Sightless Way, we start with very low rep with them. Yeah, minus 500. Uh, even if we use that page, it, they're still going to be hostile towards us unless we maybe use two of them, maybe even three. So I don't think I'm going to buy this one. The Swine, similar situation, minus 475. Um, hmm... You know what, let's, buy, let's try and buy them both if we can. There's probably not going to be much else here that we can buy. So let's see how much money we can make. I don't think we can make that much. Truth be told. I don't want to sell the Gaslight Chris just yet. No, we have quite a bit of money actually. Yeah, we, we've, we're we a stunrod millionaire. So let's buy both of those. I will use them now so you can see how they work. We'll start with the uh, swine. You press N to entangle the text. It'll give you a little bit of lore. Uh, we became admired by swine for telling bawdy jokes. Reputation increased by 200. Similarly, for the Seekers of the Sightless Way here, we will entangle it as well. We became admired by the Seekers for reprogramming their least favorite robot. This time we got 195 rep. So they're still hostile to us, but they're a little less hostile. And by the way, this is a Seeker of the Sightless Way. This one just happens to be a hired guard, so he's not our enemy. So bookbinders, always good. Okay, that guy doesn't have anything that we're interested in. Let's keep moving through the uh, still here. Okay, interesting. There is a slime weep here. These guys, these weeps, uh, you can collect liquid from them. You get these in all different varieties. Uh, slime is not really useful, but it's cool nonetheless. Uh, we have another schematics drafter. Other than that, nothing very interesting here. I will say something of note are these mirror bugs. These are uh, these are kind of end game enemies. Uh, whatever damage you deal to them, they reflect back at you, so they are very tricky to kill. Luckily, these guys are friendly. Let's keep moving. Oops. 
looks like we have at least one chef here. Yeah, Kipper and Mechanimist Convert. Let's go speak with them. This guy sells Wild Rice. Wild Rice is the same as Canned Have It All in that it gives you a random effect, but this is more powerful. You can see adds random, usually powerful effects from cooked meals. So I will buy that. I'm going to sell these two chem cells that are um, expired. And then we're going to go check the final uh, map of the stilt here. We have another schematic drafter. We're actually getting very lucky with that. Tinkering is definitely something we need to look into. And that's everything. It may actually be beneficial for us to learn tinkering like starting now because there's a lot of things you have to buy you have to initially buy the tinkering skill you then have to buy disassemble and then you buy tinker one and i also like to buy scavenger disassemble allows you to rip items apart and collect bits which is what all of the tinkering recipes need so this is essential scavenger allows you to rifle through trash uh, which can also drop bits and of course, Tinker One actually allows you to build the items. So, you know what? Why don't we grab... I know I said we were going to save for the final uh, multi-weapon fighting. We can get that. There's still plenty of time. We're, it's still early, early days for us. So we'll grab Tinkering One here. Next time, next time we level, we'll grab uh, this. And then we'll start grabbing Disassemble. In fact, you know, I am sort of tempted to hand our books in. Let's do it. I, I, I want to give you guys an example of how this all works. So, you know what? Let's grab all of these books. I don't think this will level us up, but it will get us closer. So, we'll press tab here and then press backspace or delete to hand those all in. We get 9,000 XP. That was enough to level us up. Which is great. And by the way, next level, we get a, at level 15, we'll get another rapid advancement, I believe. So now that we have Carapace, you can see next rank, we get one extra armor value and some more cold resist. The resistances are actually kind of nice. This is a bit of sweet mutation for us, but it's, it's also quite nice. I do really want to focus on double muscled and multiple arms as well. I don't want to neglect him. I do want to catch up a little bit with Carapace. So let's grab that right now. And then with Tinkering. If we buy Tinker 1. We'll get a choice between three schematics to learn right off the bat. These all kind of suck. Uh, I think. Lantern sucks the least. But we can't use it. Because we, uh, we can't wear helmets. So I guess we'll take... Airfoil, which makes grenades fly through the air slightly better. Now, give me lantern. We're going to sell it. And then what we're going to do, I know uh, we're probably done with being here. We're going to speak to these schematic drafters. We think there's three of them. And we're just going to see if there's anything we want to buy. Now we can see what these data disks actually do. Also, since we're here, schematic drafters can actually uh, identify artifacts. Like this bomb that we've broken. You, you trade water for them to ID it. This is a semi-auto pistol. Interesting. We probably want to get that repaired. That's a decent pistol. Uh, this guy has a data disc to build a chem cell. Which is quite nice. You can see it's tinkering level 1. So we could absolutely learn this. Uh, he has a Mark II high explosive grenade. Which is also quite nice. These other things are a higher level. Let's um, let's go check the other tinkerers real quick. There's not one here. There's not one here. I know there's one up here somewhere. Here he is. Just want to see if they have any good uh, recipes. Okay. Damn. 
Beam Split is really good. It's a level 2 recipe though. That's a really, really good thing to have. Uh, gesticulating, also really good. We could buy that. This gives you plus 2 strength on your gloves. Because we have two sets of gloves, I think we should absolutely buy gesticulating. Let's sell lanterns and the resonance grenade recipes and let's get rid of some of these stun rods that we've been collecting. Then you go to data disk, you click N to learn it. And then you go to the uh, relevant body part. Now gesticulating is for gloves. By the way, you can't tinker. Um, you can't tinker any of the relics that you pick up. You press T and you can see gesticulating. It needs a number one bit and a number three bit, which is one of these. We have none. But it will give us two strength. It'll also mean we can't use our floating nearby slot. So we'd have to get rid of the hover sled. Okay. I apologize for this being a less action packed thing, but we we do this once that so we never have to come back to it again, you know. We just come back here occasionally to see what what's new. Drum loaded. That's level 2. That's a shame. Uh, I don't really want either of these. I guess we could take drum loaded. Gives us extra ammo. means we have to reload less often. I'm, I don't, really don't care about it. Okay, and I think we got one more schematics drafter. Yeah. So we do have a lot of tinkerers here, which is nice. This guy doesn't really have anything that I want. Uh, geomagnetic disc is nice, but it's tinker level 2. So, we are now done at the stilt. I'm actually going to drop this uh, additional chest that I have. And in this, we're just going to keep all of the heavy stuff that we don't need to carry around with us. Uh, let's get, drop this, drop all of this stuff. I actually, I want to test this uh, two-handed steel battle axe. If we equip it, I want to know uh, how likely we are to be able to hit with it. Because I, I might want to equip that. I'm going to drop the blood, the, the water skin for the blood here as well. No need to carry that around with us. Now that we have tinkering... We can go to the uh, scrap that we've picked up and we can disassemble out. You can just hold down. Um... Oh, no, we don't have disassemble yet, actually. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we don't have disassemble yet. Ignore that. So just out of curiosity, let's unequip this and let's equip the two handed steel battle axe, which, by the way, is two handed, which means obviously it takes up two hands. And I want to see what the uh, odds are that this uh, gets to attack. It's 20%. And if we put it here, does that change the percent chance? For... I don't think it does. No, it's it's twenty. It's a flat 20% right now. I think because of uh, our multiple arms. I'm a little, I'm a little confused by that. Not really good enough for me, if I'm being honest. So we're going to stick with daggers for now. You can see all of these nice daggers, the, uh, the chem cells have ran dry, which means they're, they're no longer really worth keeping equipped, but we will keep them on us. Because uh, we just need to find some new chem cells. So let's drop uh, drop this in here. And then we can sell it later on. If there's anything that we want to buy. Along with that. I don't really care about the temporal fugue. 
I guess I'll keep it with me though. Just having it is going to be a little bit of a benefit. Okay, let's cook. I will show you guys the wild rice in action. Uh, we'll just cook with it on its own, just so you can see that it's completely random. Let's see what happens. Wow. That was not worth the money we paid for that. It gave us 100% healing rate. Okay, these are the guys you want to watch out for in the desert. These guys are flying. They, uh, they breathe fire. And you should avoid them at all costs. Unless you have a good ranged weapon. So let's move. So right now we do have the main quest started to go to Gritgate. So I think that's probably what we're going to do next time is head over there. We can, we can, oh my lord, look at this by the way. We've got Tuma and Tuma. Interesting. We are lost. We'll head over to Gritgate and we will end there. I know this has been an overly talky one today. Wow, you just got dismembered. I'm actually a little confused as to why you just got dismembered. I guess because we have this equipped. This is a 51% offhand attack chance. That's 51, that's 51, that's 50, and that's 20. If anyone can explain to me why this is lower, I would love to know. I actually can't figure out why this has a lower percent chance to uh, to make a, an attack here. But the fact that that axe is 51 is real nice, because... um. Oh yeah, we're friendly with tortoises right now, because we have carapace. That's That's really good. There we go. Easy peasy. One thing we do want to keep an eye out for are more of those fangs. Now that we have two face slots, it means we have two mouths, which means we can equip a second set. Okay, so we are currently lost, so we have to find our way out of this hell hole. This is almost a dead end. It is in fact a dead end. Great. Let's go north. Hey, we regained our bearings. Uh, we will have finished exploring this map since we're already here. This guy dropped a smell milky chew, which is a love injector. Okay. All those salt hoppers, they give decent XP still. Right. This is the village that we got. Uh, Baylar, where the, the, the girl that gave us Yonder Cane. This is the village there. I normally don't do this quest. I, I may do it. I don't like to be lost in the flower field. Flower field is, is bad news most of the time. Let's use our new chrome revolver to try and take this guy out. Perfect. May I hear a turret? Ah. Grab those slugs. You do get decent XP here. It's just, uh, you can get some, some scary enemies here, you know. Okay, we can ask that guy where we are. Let's finish clearing this map. Try and get as close as we can to this guy. There we go, they took it out. 
Now there's a lot of these cr uh, chromelings here, which normally is indicative of there being a, uh, a legendary on the map. So uh, we will check that in a moment. We will just pick everything else up first. Yes, Shati, esteemed Baraphramite lecturer. Let's take a look at you. You are disliked by the villagers of Samus for releasing snakes into their camp. Jeez, man. This is a robot, so it needs oil to do the water ritual, which we will do. You can teach us fitted with filters. And we can trade with you. Now, because this is a Baraphromite, Baraphromites specialize in, tinker in tinkering, so they have some decent recipes a lot of the time. Most of these are going to be uh, pretty bad, but this owner stimulators is quite nice. These are a pair of gloves that give you plus one strength and plus one agility. Um, they are expensive. They are very expensive. We can manage it. Ah, we picked up mechanical wings also. I don't like mechanical wings. A lot of people do. If you want cheap flight, you can use those. I don't really care about it personally. So I'm going to sell them. We'll take the honor stimulator recipe. And we'll sell anything that we don't want here. There we go. That's a good trade. Early, early on, I wouldn't mind having two pairs of these. Let's see what they take to uh, to make here. We need a two C bits and a three bit. Not bad. Let's keep moving. Okay, here we are at Grit Gate. So. When we're back, we're going to fight our way down to Gritgate and speak with the Baraphramites. They're going to give us the next uh, quest to go to Golgotha. And I will see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy Caves of Cud content, please let me know. Uh, remember to leave a like. And uh, I will see you next time.